2, 8 through 14. The King James text today reads, And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Amen. Father, today, God, once again, we thank you, Lord, for this time, for this season. We thank you, God, for this opportunity to reflect upon and remember that moment in human history when divinity and humanity met in that manger in Bethlehem. Master, as the word of God would go forth today, no one stands more aware of his human frailty and the need for the anointing of the Holy Ghost. No one understands the need for this more than I do. And I ask God today that your anointing, your power, your presence would rest upon me as your messenger. Help me, O oh God, to deliver the word of the Lord in a fashion that is pleasing in your sight and in a fashion, O oh God, that, uh, that causes it not merely to be heard in human hearing, but rather, O oh God, so that it might bring about change in human hearts. Touch us today, O oh God, by reason of your word, for we ask it in that precious name, Jesus. Amen. Praise God and amen. I grew up in a fundamentalist Christian family on my mother's side. They were all assemblies of God, and uh, I grew up in the uh, in the in the the. the muck and mire of a movement that seems to believe that fear is the most powerful tool God can possibly use. I grew up in a church listening to preaching where the preacher seemed like most of the time anyway, the preacher was more interested in scaring you to death then he was uplifting you and inspiring you and encouraging you to believe and obey the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. There's this mentality within fundamentalism and evangelicalism that the best way to get people to the foot of the cross is to scare the life out of them. Mm. you got to scare people to death. We hear more preaching about hell then we do heaven, we hear more preaching about the devil than we do about the Lord. We hear more preaching about the judgment of God than we hear about the mercy of God, the love of God, the grace of God. And it's so sad because when we go back to the very beginning of the gospel story, when we go back to the very start, of that wonderful occasion when God manifested himself to the human family in the person, in the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. When God himself was born into human existence at the very beginning, 
fear was not part of the plan. Fear was not the crux of the message. As a matter of fact, the very opposite was true. Hallelujah. The angel of God appeared to the shepherds in the field. And of course, any time the glory of God is revealed, people tend to get scared. You let the glory of God be revealed and folks begin to quake and shake. It's a little scary. Well, I got news for you. The word of God tells us that the glory of God is seen. Listen, this is what the apostle told us. In the face of Jesus Christ. You want to see the glory of God? Hallelujah. Look Jesus in the face. When those angels, when that angel appeared to the shepherds in the field, he was bringing news to them of the revelation of the glory of God on planet Earth. And of course, their reaction, as so often is the case, with anything concerning God, you start talking about God and how many people immediately go to a fear of response. You start talking about God and people who really believe and understand there is a God, immediately they go to, oh boy, judgment. Oh boy, yeah, condemnation. Oh boy, yes. Because that is the concept and the understanding of God that they have. I've got news for you today. The Old Testament message of the law didn't do a whole lot to inspire the notion of God that is gracious and merciful and kind. No, the law was given not to reveal God to humanity. Listen, this is what the Word of God tells us. The law was given to reveal sin. Mm -hmm. The law was not there so we could understand God. The law was there so we could understand sin. The Word of God said where there is no law, there is no sin. There is no transgression where there is no law. You cannot transgress something that does not exist. If there's no speed limit on this road, then you cannot break the speed limit. Do you hear what I'm telling you now? In order to break the speed limit, there has to be an established legal speed limit. And that speed limit has to be posted. Am I telling the truth now? Uh, yep. Well, that was the nature of the law. So the law created in many people fear and therefore anything that came from God immediately was to be feared. And yet interestingly enough at the very beginning of the Lord Jesus Christ's life the angel of God appeared to the shepherds. And the first words off his lips were, Fear not! Hallelujah! Now notice, he did not say, Fear not! Because I'm not here to hurt you! Nope. That's not what he said. He said, Fear not! Why am I telling you not to be afraid? For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. Hallelujah. He said, don't be afraid. Fear not. Because, honey, I've got good news. Matter of fact, I've got great news. Hallelujah. I bring you good tidings from the beginning, Tommy. The message of Christ was a positive message. Yes. The message of Christ was good tidings. That would bring great joy. Oh my goodness. Would it be great joy for the Jew? Excluding the Gentile. Would it be great joy for the heterosexual? Excluding the homosexual. Would it be great joy for the white man? Or for the brown skinned man? Excluding those people of color. Or those people from the Far East? No. The angel declared, I bring you good tidings of great joy, 
which shall be to all people. Hallelujah. I tell people all the time, gospel, the word gospel in the Greek literally translates good news. And it is not good news for this group over here and bad news for that group over there. What makes our church different than first church down the road is that the gospel we preach is good news. Whether you're straight or gay, whether you're black or white, whether you're old or young, whether you're rich or poor, whether you're fat or skinny, whether you're ugly or pretty, that's good news to all people. Hallelujah. Yes, amen. Oh my goodness. When you understand the nature of the gospel of Jesus Christ, you understand that nowhere in the message of Christ is the message hope for one and condemnation for another. That is not the gospel. That is not the gospel. The gospel is good news. It is Good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. You know, the angel using the phraseology, unto you is born this day, is very interesting because... When a baby is born in our world, it is not celebrated as being an addition to the human family. It is celebrated as being an addition to the family of the mother and the father and the grandmother and the grandfather. That baby isn't born unto us, it's born unto them. Am I telling you the truth now? Somebody has a baby, they don't send out a... An announcement that says, hey folks, unto you is born little Johnny or little Billy or little Freddie or little Susie or little Annette. No, and they say, we've had a baby. Am I telling the truth? Mm -hmm. But see, the angel was revealing an eternal truth, a powerful truth, a wonderful truth. In the very beginning of the Lord's life, he was revealing something that was powerful and wonderful. This baby was not born, listen to me children, this baby was not born to Joseph and to Mary. That baby was born unto you. Hallelujah to God. His name shall be called Emmanuel. Which means God with, not with Mary, not with Joseph, not with the Jewish people, but God with us. Hallelujah. God with the human family.